In this short video, we're going to talk about operations on linear transformations in matrices. Well, what do we mean by operations? Operations means essentially arithmetic or other types of operation which wouldn't make sense with numbers. So with most mathematical objects, we can do some kind of arithmetic with them. Certainly we can do some sort of addition, subtraction. In our case, we can multiply them by a scalar as well. So um, first of all, let's uh, understand that addition and subtraction of two linear transformations only makes sense when they take inputs from the same space and give outputs in the same space. In other words, they have to have the same domain and the same codomain. So we're going to write down formal definitions, but they're just going to be very sensible ideas that if I have two linear transformations with the same domain, Rn, and the same codomain, Rm, we can define the sum, the difference, and a scalar multiple uh, by uh, just adding the uh, outputs of the, or the images of those respective transformations. So I can define the sum so this T1 plus T2, we put it in parentheses to indicate that this is going to be a new a linear operator, a linear transformation. And the way we define it is we just say, well, the output of T1 plus T2 is just going to be the sum T1 of V plus T2 of V. The same idea with subtraction. And with a scalar multiple, yeah, again, we're going to have a new linear transformation, which is K times T1. And we define the image of k times t1 as k times the image of t1 of v. Really, it's very intuitive. It's exactly what we would expect. And we can do the same thing with their standard matrices, right? So that matrices, um, we should be able to add, subtract, and multiply them by a scalar. Uh, before we get too much further, let's uh, introduce this abbreviation. So for an, um, a matrix with M rows and N columns, rather than writing out all of its entries in this form, where we have to list the indices and put these continuation dots, we'll have a very simple abbreviation just brackets a, i, j, and it's understood that the i, that's the row index, goes from 1 to m, and j, the column index, goes from 1 to n. And with this abbreviation, then we can just say, all right, if we're going to add or subtract uh, matrices, really it's going to be very similar to, to working with vectors. We're going to add or subtract the corresponding entries of the matri matrices, and um, the same thing with scaling. We're just going to scale each entry by that scalar factor. So if I multiply the matrix A by K, then I'm just going to take each one of the entries and distribute that multiplication to each of the entries. And you can also talk about the negation of A. And in that sense, you're going to negate or change the sign on all of the entries of a. So uh, just as a reminder, it only makes sense to add or subtract uh, matrices if they have the same number of rows and columns. Um, you know, that's the same order. That's equivalent to saying the corresponding linear transformations have the same domain and the same codomain. And then uh, we could also look at it as uh, instead of adding and subtracting corresponding entries, we could look at it as adding, subtracting corresponding columns. Sometimes that's going to be a useful view. And also as uh, adding or subtracting corresponding rows. Uh, we actually used this fact per in a previous video when we showed that an elementary row operation indeed represents a linear operator. All right, so um, further connections then. 
between the uh, sum difference in scalar multiples of linear transformations and their standard matrices. Uh, again, it's a very simple idea. It may seem like there's a lot of complicated notation, but again, it's a very simple idea. What it says is that if I take the sum or the difference of two uh, linear transformations, then the matrix, standard matrix representing that sum or difference is just going to be the sum or difference of the standard matrices of each of the uh, transformations that's being added or subtracted. And the same thing here, if I look at the scalar multiple of a linear transformation, what is its standard matrix? Well, it's just going to be that scalar multiple times the standard matrix of the linear transformation. All right, let's look at composition, because composition is an operation that can be formed on functions, but can't be doesn't make any sense, can't be performed on numbers. And so we use this circ notation. Uh, so we've overloaded the circ notation in this course because uh, we also use that for the dot product. So we have to understand uh, what the context is, and that's why it's so crucial that when we're writing things down that we, if f and g were vectors, then we'd have to have arrows over them. But here f and g represent scalar functions. And so it's clear that the circ notation here means composition. f composed with g of x is defined as f of g of x. So in our picture here, we represent functions as little machines. They have an input funnel and an output funnel. That's what these uh, funny symbols are supposed to represent. So x goes into g, g changes it somehow, and then outputs g of x. g of x then is used as input to the function f, and out of that f, well f may change g of x in some way, you get its image f of g of x. So the output from G is used as input to F. We are daisy chaining these functions together. And so what does that mean? Well, G of X has to be in the domain of F. Of course, X has to be in the domain of G. Now we can do the same kind of thing with linear transformations. As we said, a transformation is just another word for a function. Except for now, that with linear transformations, we have inputs and outputs which are vectors. So we're going to daisy chain t1 and t2 together, linear transformations. The input to t1 is going to be a vector in the Rn space. It's going to put out a vector, t1 of v, which is in rk. Then rk has to be the domain of t2. So the output from t1 has to be in the domain of t2. It goes into t2. t2 may ch change it somehow. And then it outputs a new vector in the rm space. And that's t2 of t1 of v. And so we can compose linear transformations just the same way that we can compose functions. The key is that in order for that uh, transformation to be defined, you have to uh, have the codomain of the first linear transformation be the domain of the second transformation. And that's exactly what I'm saying here, that the output from T1 has to be in uh, the, a, the domain of T2. It has to be a valid input to T2. Now, let's look at the composition. It's a valid question. If I compose two 
linear transformations, is it still a linear transformation? And uh, you would get the feeling that it should be because both T1 and T2 are linear transformations. But let's just check it out here. So suppose I take the sum of vectors u1, I mean, sorry, u and v, and I use that as input to the composition t2 composed with t1. Well, by definition, that just means t2 of t1 of the sum u plus v. Now, t1 is a linear transformation, so I can use its additivity product, additivity property, to write it as t1 of u plus t1 of v. Now, these are just two vectors, t1 of u and t1 of v. Those are vectors in Rk, which are the inputs to t2. t2 is a linear transformation, so I can use its additivity property. And now I've got the sum t2 of t1 of u plus t2 plus t1 of v, which is exactly t2 composed with t1 of u plus t2 composed with t1 of v. And that shows that we have additivity. We can also show that the linear, I mean the composition, t2 composed with t1, uh, has homogeneity because both t1 and t2 have homogeneity. So if I just write the definition of t2 composed with t1 of kv, k is a scalar, then I can use the homogeneity of t1 to factor out the k1. And now what do I have? I have k times t1 of v. Well, t1 of v is just some vector in Rk. And so I've just got k times a vector being used as input to t2. Well, t2 enjoys homogeneity or has the homogeneity property. And so I can factor out the k. And what I'm multiplying by t2 of t1 of v, that is just the definition of t2 composed with t1 of v. And that shows that we've got the homogeneity property as well as the additivity property for the composition. So put those together. We can see that the composition of two linear transformations is still a linear transformation, which means that it should have a matrix representation. So how can we find the standard matrix of the composition of linear transformations? Well, of course, we could always use the idea of finding the image of the standard basis vectors, but there's an even easier way if I know the standard um, matrices for T1 and T2. And let's just go through that for a minute here. So if I look at T2 composed with T1 of V, of course, just by definition, that means T2 of T1 of V. And uh, well, T1 of V, we said its standard matrix is A. So the action of T1 on V is the same as taking A and multiplying it times V. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and call A V U. So let's make a substitution here. And then the action of T2 on U is the same as taking the matrix B and multiplying it times U, because B is the standard matrix for T2. And now I can go ahead and uh, back substitute. I'll put uh, A V in the place of U, and then rearrange the parentheses, B times AV is the same as BA times V, which shows that the standard matrix for T2 composed with T1 is just the standard matrix of T2 times the standard matrix of T1. So the standard matrix of the composition is going to be the product of the corresponding standard matrices. And of course, the order matters. You keep the same order.
And so uh, th that's a very useful result. And really, that's, that's uh, something that we will be using in our next video where we continue talking about uh, matrices, matrix multiplication, and its properties.